us making a contribution to the world, being able to change somebody's life, or even if we're, if we're fortunate to have saved someone's life, would be which is a, a completely life-changing experience for ourselves. Um, the next speaker uh, does this for a living. This is a, Dr. Black is a, not your normal doctor. He's a heart surgeon, and he does life-saving operations on a regular basis. But he's not your normal doctor either. He's kind of your doctor from Star Trek. This is a doctor that uses all kinds of robotics technologies, and, and he's recognized worldwide as one of the pioneers in this uh, area of development. Uh, to welcome, let me welcome uh, Dr. Michael Black on stage to come and talk to him about some, some of his work. Tell, tell us how, how you got going on this stuff. I mean, here's a, you're a doctor, you're, you're a, you operate on hearts, and, and then all of a sudden one day you're using robots? I mean, how, how does this all happen? Yeah, it was a real evolution. I think, um, like other people, there's many factors that uh, lead you to what you end up doing. I uh, really did not like making big incisions and felt that I could provide patients with a better outcome through a smaller incision. But the bottom line was I got bored. And um, I think anyone can operate on a heart with a huge incision. So I tried to challenge myself and use cameras or robotics to move forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you, you, you also uh, happen to operate on, on some very, very small subjects. Yes. Right? Because of your focus in congenital uh, heart defects, heart, dis heart disease, right? Yeah, the smallest baby I believe I've operated on, probably the youngest in the world, it was 22 weeks five and seven days premature, weighed about 410 grams. Uh, it's like a little mouse. Unbelievable. Yes. And you operated on his heart. Yes. Wow. Okay, well, that's, um, uh, before we, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of actually mind-blowing, yes. just, to, just to take it all in. Uh, before we, before we talk, ask you any more questions, let's have the audience put on your 3D glasses again. I want to show you a brief clip from a documentary that we're making tonight, and it's in an area that is very, that has been inspired and influenced greatly by the work that Dr. Michael Black has done. Please, please put on your uh, glasses. Our group is researching uh, techniques to perform motion compensation for beating heart surgeries. In order to avoid uh, stopping the heart the surgeon can perform the surgical act through small holes on a patient's thorax. So through these uh, small incisions in a patient's body, the surgeon defines a region of interest. We're evil. <laughs> this is the universal sign for stop. <laughs> Let's try that again. Can we try that again, please? Without the two of us? <laughs> But to start, stand by. <laughs> and that's why we practice. <laughs> Our group is researching uh, techniques to perform motion compensation for beating heart surgeries. In order to avoid uh, stopping the heart, the surgeon can perform the surgical act through small holes on a patient's thorax. So through these uh, small incisions in a patient's body, the surgeon defines a region of interest. We are able to estimate its motion in 3D. The robot tracks this motion and moves synchronously with the beating heart motion so that the surgeon can perform his gesture as if he was operating in a virtually stable environment. The problem here is actually the volume of data that you have to, to treat. The heart moves at very high speeds, so therefore you actually have to visualize the heart motion at a very high speed. In order to do that, we have to acquire images at a much higher frame rate that demands a lot of computational power. Until very recently, uh, we didn't have the computational power to process these images as they come. It was only with the GPU that uh, this became possible because before, the computational power was too expensive or it was simply impossible to perform the algorithms that were needed in order to achieve this. I 
actually motivates us to, uh, to keep working towards this, uh, such a system is uh, the possibility of expanding motion compensation for beating heart surgery to enable surgeons to perform even more complicated procedures or procedures that today are not possible. We're actually hoping to uh, do something that is going to change medicine, so that's going to provide surgeons with uh, more possibilities. Wow. Now, Dr. Black, that's, that's really amazing. Now, where, where do you think this technology goes? Where do we go from here? I mean, you've got, you've got robots that are now able to, to uh, uh, interact with doctors that, that, are, that are sitting, you said, apparently in the corner. Typically, you're in a corner uh, away from the robot. You have cameras that are, that are uh, inside the body. Uh, you see it in 3D, and now it's able to even understand and deal with the common of motion of beating heart. I mean, what, what, what is the implication of that and where does it go from here? Yeah, it's an amazing thing and I really want to thank uh, companies such as yourself for providing surgeons such as me this opportunity, but you can imagine um, if one day you envision making very small little ports and putting the robot in and being able to operate on a beating heart without stopping it and using all this ancillary medical equipment, artificial heart lung machines that have their own problems, you can envision operating with this robot on a beating heart and sending the patient home the same day. And um, you know, some other work, fetal work, or even uh, astronauts, you know, people uh, question what will happen if we envision going to the stars. We can have 20 different specialists aboard a spacecraft. So having the ability to miniaturize eventually, maybe making the robots untethered. I envision having the end effector internalized in the body but that much generation of information and analytics would need really powerful processes such as yours. And eventually we'll have these little robots working around the body and we'll be controlling them from outside the body. That's unbelievable. Now, now you could apply this for, for uh, heart beating heart surgery. What else can you apply this technology for? Are there other areas of, of uh, medicine that you could apply the technology on? Absolutely. I, I think with this uh, example here, they rendered motion. And motion was uh, they freezed, at least uh, visually, the heart. Uh, there are other cues in the body. There's electrical sig signals, such as the electrocardiogram or neural waves. So there's going to be a whole bunch of different cues coming in. And if you can use them all at the same time, you can envision operating maybe in an electronic field within the brain, motion for the heart uh, on the smallest parts of the body, such as maybe the fetus. I had a fetal lab that I was trying to do robotics on. It was a sheep. I couldn't use humans that'd be put in jail at the time. But we, we used to um, uh, investigate and instrument the umbilical, the blood vessels from the belly button to the sheep internally, and put little catheters in and move around. And all those things with these visual cues trying to immobilize motion is going to make it much more precise. You, 